Hello, in this video we'll be having a look on what is a SharePoint Starter Kit and how to get started with the solution. So SharePoint Starter Kit is something which has been released uh, in May 2018 as a reference solution on building extensibility on top of the communication sites, on SharePoint communication sites. You can find uh, the SharePoint Starter Kit uh, from the GitHub and github.com slash SharePoint slash SP Starter Kit. So out-of-the-box communication sites are, are, is a great capability, but every now and then you might have a functional or business requirement which will ask you or demand you to do some uh, customization on top of them. And this uh, SharePoint Starter Kit is basically there to show you how to make those things happen. So it's a kind of a reference solution or an example solution how to add additional functionalities on top of group associated team sites or communication sites in the context of this kind of a larger a hub site a scenario. So if you go to the github.com slash SharePoint slash SP Starter Kit, you'll find uh, everything related on the solution. Uh, you'll also find, if you scroll down, uh, you can find uh, what's the default outcome from the provisioning of the solution and what are the objectives of the solution and also how to get started. Uh, you will need to install the, the latest version of the BMP PowerShell and there are certain uh, tenant level requirements which we cannot actually do automatically as part of the provisioning. So we're asking you to do those uh, following up on this guidance. Those are mainly for uh, defining a custom property for user profile service, uh, at least for now, and then uh, additional settings related on the on the stock uh, information web part, which is using Alpha Vantage uh, API. If you don't, if you're not interested on in using the stock information web part, you can absolutely skip and that requirement as well. Now. Right now, uh, we're asking you to upload the SharePoint Portal Showcase SPPKG file from the package folder to your app catalog. So making sure that that's being deployed uh, within your tenant. And then you actually run uh, connect to your tenant and run connect uh, by running the connect PMP online commandlet and then uh, running deploy uh, PowerShell from the uh, from the provisioning folder. So basically, if you have uh, downloaded this one, if you have cloned this one or downloaded uh, the packets down by clicking the green button and then download zip uh, and extracted that package, where we would be asking you to then go to provision folder and in the provision folder, uh, you're able to then find the automatic provisioning uh, of the of the solution. So you would be doing deploy and then on URL and this is whatever URL uh, within your tenant which is suitable for uh, provisioning. Basically, this we're not provisioning technically directly to the site collection or using that site collection to just get to the context of the tenant uh, as we are provisioning three different site collections. And then the second uh, option in here, which we do recommend to use is the site prefix. So you could do something like Contoso as the prefix and that would then mean that the site collections which the provisioning engine uh, or the provisioning script is creating would have the Contoso prefix. So there would be Contoso portal, Contoso HR, and condos on marketing as the three site collections which are getting provisioned. Now, after uh, the site provisioning uh, and the site uh, the implement uh, execution of the script is completed, uh, you will actually get this nice looking. You will get this nice looking uh, outcome. Let me actually close that uh, reminder. Uh, outcome, which is by default orange. Uh, so we're adding a custom theme available uh, within the site. And if you don't like the orange, you can absolutely uh, change that from a Contoso portal to some out of the box theme, or you can introduce your own custom theme uh, in the in the in the tenant as well. But in this case, let's actually keep the orange uh, and apply that one and we're good to go. So in this site collection, this is the so-called portal site collection. And this is a communication site where we have then created some uh, news and content here. We added some uh, events, we added some custom web parts, we added some even uh, a presentation inside of the of the site collection just to demonstrate the provisioning capabilities and the build kind of structure for you to get started. And uh, you can also see the panel web part and the world clock web part in here. Now in the in the button section of the page, uh, you can see our portal uh, footer and the portal footer uh, is available. Um, it's pretty cool capability. You're able to add your personalized links here, like let's say SP 
PMP and the one URL to remember where you can find all of the relevant information uh, for SharePoint development is AKMS SP PMP. So adding that one and saving that one that's going to be saved for my persona to my personalized links uh, in this footer. That's pretty cool. Now, uh, the other side, uh, so other things what we are actually demonstrating here is obviously quite a few web parts, which some of them are visible in the front page, like this tiles web part in here, uh, which you can configure uh, based on your input as well. So this is a pretty cool web part. You're able to configure that uh, based on this uh, collection uh, editor, which is a SharePoint framework reusable control uh, for you to take advantage as well. And, and you're able to define what is the UI fabric icon name, which is going to be then rendered in the web part. Now, the other things what we, what we are delivered uh, or provisioned uh, automatically is, for example, the personal uh, view. So personal view on the data. And the personal view is showing, uh, for example, uh, your upcoming meetings, your personal emails, your personal contacts. If you have anything in this tenant, I don't have them. And also my recent documents. So few additional web parts which are personalized, which are showing personal view to the data within the tenant. Now, uh, this also actually uh, has a pretty cool functionality uh, for uh, for alerting. So quite often companies and customers, they have a requirement of, of having some sort of announcements coming up on or alerts uh, on the portal. And we implemented that by using a, an extension. So you can actually go to this alert list. And in the alert list, let's actually add here an alert, which is something like remember to check SharePoint uh, PMP content. And this is an urgent or informational alert. And let's actually copy the title uh, in the alert message as well. And then let's say that that uh, valid validity of the alert starts from yesterday. And let's add here the one URL to remember, uh, which was AKMSSPPMP. So let's copy that one and save that one and save here. So now we have the entry available uh, with a start and an end to date, which is pretty cool. So now if we go back on the front page of the portal or anywhere in the portal, we can actually see that uh, alert being rendered because that's the we're inside of the validity of that alert message. So pretty cool. The other things here, uh, what's actually uh, also available is that uh, when we provision the site, uh, provision the end-to-end -end solution, we actually provision also site designs and site scripts to your tenants. And this is one of the reasons why we say that you shouldn't necessarily uh, use this within your production because it might be slightly confusing for your end users. But now if we go to the create site, and then we choose either communication side or a team side. We can actually see a Contoso team side or Contoso communication side site design option available. And so let's call this uh, video uh, recording demo. And let's create a new site collection. Luckily, creation of, of modern team sites is extremely fast. So this is just a matter of a few seconds and the site collection creation is completed. Now, the site script behind of the site design is getting started and we can actually see that there's two action getting applied to this site. Number one action is adding this site to a hub site, which is the portal site or the communication site, which you just saw, and also the associating SPFX extension to collaborate, uh, associate SPFX extension collaboration footer. It says actually action failed and associated into the hub sites, but let's see if it if we were successful on the associations. And yes, we actually were because we can see the hub site navigation in here. So there was a, some sort of a hiccup on the site design uh, execution. But from here, I can then click PMP SP target and I will land back on the portal. But on the on the group associated team sites, you can actually see the footer here as well. So there's a custom footer uh, available, which can be controlled by using uh, taxonomy extensions. Uh, so you can actually see a company wide uh, links here, or you can click the my links where you can actually see the same my link which were already configured in the portal footer as well. So that we have this kind of a personalization demonstrated within the solution as well. And you're able to also access uh, edit my links uh, from this UI as well. So same functionality as from the portal side. Now I can click back on the uh, here and we'll be back on the portal side. So you're in kind of in the context of the portal all the time uh, if you follow up on the, let's say demo solutions and demo scripts in here. Now, 
when whenever you actually have provisioned or pulled down the solution, uh, you basically have this kind of a solution structure uh, then available within your local uh, local machine. And just to quickly go this through, uh, this is the documentation folder. Uh, it has the requirements documentation on things. A package has already the package SPPKG file. So if you're only interested on the web part, not about getting site collections provision to your tenant, you can just download the SPPKG file uh, from here and you can then use some of the web parts uh, in your existing tenant already, which is pretty cool. Now, the provisioning folder actually contains the provisioning logic, and this is using then uh, the PMP provisioning engine uh, with a, a combination, well, it is creating site design and site script uh, to the tenant as, as well. Um, so it is a selection, well, it's a combination of PowerShell, PMP PowerShell, and the PMP provisioning engine definitions. But it's, it's a great demo on how to make things actually happen and how to provision stuff using the remote provisioning technique. And uh, then we have a sample LOP service. Uh, we do not have right now details when this video is uh, recorded to the details on how to set up this one in your tenant, but we'll have those documentation coming up relatively soon as well. And then uh, the actual solution here uh, is the actual code behind of the web parts and everything else. So if I open up this one in Visual Studio Code, uh, we can actually see the source code for all of the web parts which are available and visible in the UI and also for example the tiles web part is here. Uh, all of these are using uh, Office UI Fabric and then SPP, SPFX, uh, PMP SPFX controls. So using the property controls and the React controls or Office UI Fabric React controls. So we're providing that consistent look and feel uh, across all of the web parts. And you can also find uh, the source code for extensions uh, and all of the other stuff uh, here as well. Some of these extensions you saw in this video, some of these extensions are not actually visible in this video, but we'll get additional documentation uh, and demonstrations on them in the documentation as we move along on this journey of improving the existing solution as well. But that's pretty much what we wanted to do within this quick video. Uh, so this was all around demonstrating what is available uh, in the SharePoint starter kit, uh, which is extending uh, the create out of the box collaboration sites. Um, and it's demonstrating how to address your, let's say, customer or your deployment specific functional and business requirements. And also it has a pretty nice set of additional web parts and which are available for you to take advantage in your deployments as well. We will keep on uh, evolving this sample uh, in the future as well. So you will be seeing additional versions, additional capabilities available which you can take advantage in your deployments as well. But that's it for this video. So thank you for watching and please let us know what you think about this solution. And if you have great ideas what we should add here, just let us know and uh, or contribute also in the GitHub as well. So we do welcome community contributions on this solution as well. Thank you. Thank you.